So, you know what we're looking at. Mount St. Helens is a baby at a mere, it's about half a million years old. So, when year was about one. Um, and its last big eruption, so about half a million years ago is when the bulk of the caldera formed. And its last decent eruption was 2,000 years ago. Um, and about 400 years ago, was it six, I forget, was its last decent pumice eruption. So that basically blew a load of stuff and blow. It's kind of like since it blows stuff into the air, inflates, and it put loads of pumice flows everywhere. And I know when that happened because all the trees are stunted. Yeah, so it sort of stunted a load of trees for a few years in the locality, but didn't kill them, so they nailed that in the tree rings. There, huh? You see, oops. All the lively stuff in there. Fantastic. Smoking everywhere. And this is a huge washout. This comes all the way down. the interesting bit for all those creationists who say that this is proof that the Grand Canyon could have been formed almost instantly you'll notice that this doesn't look anything like the Grand Canyon the Grand Canyon has loads of little tributaries on it in fact it looks more dendritic and fractal like this is just more a straight drainage channel that comes off the, the uh, ice melt you also notice that there are no signs of sedimentation down there, as in it's just one huge mudslide, one layer that has been cut through by a stream. Impressive though. Very impressive. Anyway. This is just another example of the flora here. So you get red, purple, yellow, yellow, and there's white as well. White just in the middle there. Pretty, eh? Okay, so that's Mount St. Helens down there. And the blast came down the valley along with the mudslide which still looks pretty uh, alluvial but in the shadow, the blast shadow of all the mountains coming down here there are trees that actually survived the blast and on some of these ridges like this guy over here what you actually find is there are trees that um, they stood but the the volcanic heat the heat of the uh, blast that came down here actually cooked some of the trees so they died but remained standing they weren't knocked over by the blast but they were killed by the subsequent heat okay and this is the um, forest learning center and it's got some really quite nice exhibits like this one for instance which shows that if you were within about 60 miles of the actual explosion you wouldn't have even heard it and indeed over there there's all these um, stories of people who were next to the volcano when it did explode and they heard nothing and so uh, yeah, there's a sort of resonant frequency um, between when you can hear it and when you can't 
Um, anyway, indeed, you could have actually stood on uh, the uh, right side of the volcano. I forget whether it's uh, north or south, but either way, you could have stood on one end, one side of the volcano and been perfectly fine. Whereas if the other on the other side, of course, you would have fared less well. Anyway, yeah, it's got some really quite nice. They've got some really quite nice exhibits there. So here we go. Okay, so this is us. Uh, we're up here somewhere. Forest Learning Centre, that's us. And so it blew out to the north, so if you were on the south side, you'd have been fine. Yesterday, of course, I, c I tried to come around this side to see the trees, but um, the road was washed out. And it's, this is mostly where the mudslide went, um, which is what we just looked at outside. And we will be heading up to the observatory and to see what we can see. So what I was actually hoping to get, apparently you don't see it quite so well on this drive, is initially you see trees with no branches, then you see trees which are um, blown over and uprooted, and then you see trees that are actually sort of snapped and pulled out the ground as you get closer and closer. So, yeah, I mean, this is, and you, this is over miles. I was hoping to get this on the time lapse. But unfortunately, the good road to actually see that in has washed out. So, some other time, maybe. Okay, this is also the Forest Learning Center, where they have some really quite interesting exhibits, like cut through sections of trees. This is to do with tree farming. They prune the trees, and if you don't prune the trees, the, the knots basically ruin the timber. Uh, whereas if you do, you get much better wood. And they have other things like cross sections of volcanoes, uh, which has unfortunately lost all its labelling. But uh, uh, shame really, I'd like to actually know all the different layers are. But um, then they have uh, various types of volcanic rock and a nice little table that basically. Um, Pumice, I think, is fairly close to Sinters, which we saw at uh, Craters of the Moon. Then you enter the Rhyolite. This is sort of, and it, it, it's basically determined by cooling rate. So the slower you cool, the bigger the grains you get. So it gets more crystalline as you cool more slowly. Um, and there'll also be a density thing on here. I assume this is this is lighter, this is denser. Um, so anyway, they have some quite interesting exhibits and quite a lot of wildlife things like various uh, animal tracks, insects. Oh, really? They're quite nice. And uh, for, for those who are not interested in living animals, uh, oh wow, I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of those. And lots of uh, trout that they have around here. And some interesting cross sections of trees, including this one of the redwoods. Now, and I've really not figured out quite yet what causes this discoloration. You see it in some of these trees, and much less so in others. And I'm not quite sure what causes that. So. Most of, this is for the a fascinating change in coloration. These are for the oh. yeah. they, they, they are more to That's an interesting uh, block of wood. Weather, sort of growing uh, older weather, 